Hello everyone and welcome to this new edition of Initiative Africa. We head for Pointe Noire in the heart of a neighborhood where kickboxing is redefining the future of young people. More than just a gym, the Tiger Club is a place of hope and discipline where every punch is a chance to turn away from crime. We'll find out more later, but for now, here is the summary of our program. Between tradition and modernity, Dudu Kwate revolutionizes African music through jazz and classical fusion. Le choix the choice to introduce African percussion is changing the face of classical music as it has been known and listened to for many years. A breath of hope and resilience is reshaping the future of the youth at the Fontiété in Pointe Noire thanks to local initiatives. Sometimes kids, rather young delinquent at home, come here with our own rules, rigor and discipline. We manage to steer them in the right direction. Ready for some sports? Fitness rooms are developing at full speed in Pointe Noire to meet the strong demand from sports enthusiasts. I'm overwhelmed. I don't just work in one gym, but in several ones. I also coach several persons in their homes. In a world often marked by despair, Fontiétier in Pointe Noire is emerging as a true catalyst for change. Here, education, entrepreneurship and social innovation come together to offer young people opportunities that can change the course of their lives. Join us in this compelling report that highlights the hard work of those who believe in a better future and discover how determined young people are redefining their destiny. Brought to you by our correspondent in Pointe Noire, Brice Kinu. We are in Fontiété, one of the slums of the Republic of Congo's ocean city. It's here that Armand Misenge, who is passionate about fist and foot combat, dreams of a brighter future for the young boys and girls of this underprivileged neighborhood. He has teamed up with Mwanza Jean Serge to create the Tiger Kickboxing Club. Their aim is to train young people in this Japanese sport with strict rules to give them a better educational framework preventing them from falling into delinquency, which unfortunately is a common sight in the area. Sometimes kids, rather young delinquent at home, come here with our own rules, rigor and discipline. We manage to steer them in the right direction. Once you're in Tiger, you can't do street fights, fight stupidly, in bars or at home, even with your own family. We have strict rules. We are not just coaches, we are also educational instructors. On top of training, we give them advice on how to earn an honest living, work and go to school. There are people here who have passed their A-levels, others are in university. For example, we have a champion called Menute, who is studying in Senegal, and another champion from Kowolo, Mwanda, Rukina, who was trained here. Tiger Club officials claim that any athlete caught breaking the club's rules are subject to sanctions not only at club level, but also with their parents, schools and at other levels. A rigorous approach that is already producing encouraging results much to the delight of parents. Since my children, my two daughters, entered the world of sport, I've been happy with them because they don't hang out with groups of people. You know, what kind of groups most young girls and boys go to? I ask parents, those responsible for their children, to steer them towards sport because the world of sport does a lot to educate children. 
Founded in 2011, Tiger Club has already produced several lightweight, middleweight and heavyweight champions at departmental, national and continental level, despite the scarcity of championships in the country. Doni Rahim Vuta Vobrel, the African lightweight champion who's still training in the open-air gym at Fontier-Thier, has big ambitions. My ambition is always to climb the ladder. To tell the truth from being an African champion is a first step. I want to go beyond that, and why not become world champion, especially as I love the UFC? Why not compete in MMA, competition and other disciplines? In the Republic of Congo, juvenile delinquency or the phenomenon of black babies is becoming increasingly worrying. A recent UNICEF U report study carried out in Pointe Noire shows that a large number of boys and a small number of girls aged between 10 and 25 in the slums are involved in assault and bodily injuries, sexual violence, theft and racketeering. According to the same study, this situation is encouraged by the lack of jobs, extracurricular activities, sports entertainment and education. Tiger Club appears to bring a preventive solution for channeling and redirecting these young boys and girls towards a better path and could become vital throughout the country to avoid young people from falling into violence and drugs. This week, we invite you to delve into the musical universe of our guest, Dudu Kuwate. With passion and authenticity, he shares his experience of the artistic scene, his inspirations and his commitment to culture. In this interview, we discover how our artist transforms his emotions into melodies and how he contributes to the richness of contemporary music. Take a listen. Dudu Kwate, hello and welcome to Initiative Africa. You have just returned from an artist residency with the String Quartet. What do you take away from it? Is it the appeal of experimentation or the desire to learn? Yes, there is always experimentation, discovery and learning in music. Because one never stops learning, even with younger musicians, as is the case in this residency. They are musicians, both male and female, I would say quite young, but they are talented and we managed to play both my compositions and their compositions just as well. And to create new music based on our feelings and emotions. Well, it is an honest, friendly and human exchange. A positive exchange, and yet, is this not the first time you have collaborated with this classical universe? This experience, which is not entirely new, has been a great one since 2020 and 2021. 2021. I have already been collaborating with classical musicians from the Manchester Collective for a South African musician, a cellist named Abdel Saleko, who has graduated from the Conservatoire and is a talented young musician who is somewhat revolutionizing. European classical music by introducing new sounds, influences and sound contamination, particularly African one. Therefore, he's also a composer and the choice to introduce African percussion is changing the face of classical music as it has been known and listened to for many years. I have been collaborating with classical musicians for three or four years now, but primarily I work in jazz, free jazz, and also on my own composition. 
How do you bring to life this fusion of styles and traditions? We quickly found a way of bringing all this together to create something that would satisfy everyone, including classical music lovers. It can also appeal greatly to African because there are two styles in the same pot and it's a mix. Therefore, meeting these young classical musicians is a pleasure and a continuation of what I'm currently trying to achieve in terms of experience because for me as well, I have been on this journey for four years and it's ongoing, it's a journey. Everything that will come from classical music blended with what I'm doing is an extension of this path already set in motion. You have released two albums, Africation and more recently, Time in Birds. What distinguishes them or how do these two works contrast or complete each other? These two albums were released over five years. I believe that every week we evolve, progress, change and improve. So over five years, the first album was a challenge. It was truly a challenge for me because I was already collaborating with many musicians. But often there was this problem of being understood. When you do not write things down clearly on paper to give to the musician, I did not want to do that because firstly, I could not and secondly, I did not want to. I thought, well, okay, I have ideas in my mind, I have my music in my mind because this is the music I created in Africa. It was the culmination of a journey. This is how I operate. I start the journey and complete it with something tangible, a support, something written or recorded. And then I play. From that moment, I embark on another adventure. So for Africation, this was to resolve a problem definitely. I was tired of explaining what I wanted to do because it's not complicated as my music is simple but emotional and it conveys things, but they need to be played. Often musicians do not listen. So I thought, okay, I want to record something where I can set every detail precisely where I want it and present it to the musician I want to play with. And I tell them, I want to do this, you listen to it and we do it together. And that made it much easier. And Time in Birds, your second album that marks the beginning of a new chapter. I've closed this chapter, I started exploring, experimenting, left and right, anywhere, with anyone, just to try things out. And then, during this journey, I encountered electronic music, sound effects, I encountered white concrete music, I discovered contact microphone along the way. I moved to Berlin where I met musicians who are truly involved in the Berlin impro and free jazz scene. The Berlin, the free jazz, the... And there, many things are happening, transformation, musical exchanges. I have also left behind many things. It is this transformation, this evolution that I believe characterizes me and which, in fact, I love. I adore experimenting. I adore stepping outside the comfort zone of what I know and my culture of reference. Ma culture de, de, de référence, bon, sans perdre, euh, euh, Without naturally losing the African aspect that is always present in everything I do, because I cannot help but be who I am.
Welcome back to the second part of our show. How to get rid of gloomy thoughts and maybe even a few extra pounds. In Pointe Noire, the economic capital of Congo, we are witnessing a boom in startups specialized in sports and fitness. The rise in well-being through sports seems to gain traction and some have even found a new business opportunity. Our journalist Jean-David Mihamle dived into the routine of a coach with the help of our cameraman, Brice Kinhu. Pointe Noire, the economic capital of Congo. We are in the wild coast area, on the fine sandy beach, and these Congolese are proudly working out. In a few months, the number of gyms and fitness clubs has doubled in Pointe Noire. There are already 10 sports and fitness centers outside the major hotels in the city. Coach Desti alone oversees three gyms. Yes, I'm overwhelmed. I don't just work in one gym, but in several ones. I also coach several persons in their homes. Here I'm the head coach. I teach at the beach. As I told you, I created a concept called No Limit. It helps those who don't really have the means to work out. A monthly subscription in a gym varies on average between 25 and 100 euros. At a time when COVID-19 is ruining social ties and maintaining gloom, sports is seen as a lifeline, a bearer of hope. Practicing the sport is vital at the moment. Not in terms of distraction or entertainment. Working out right now is all I have. I'm currently working out to improve myself in this field. I want to show people that you can exceed your limits. For this lady, a member of a fitness club in Pointe Noire, sport confers health and well-being. Practicing a sport helped me to keep healthy, avoid illness, and above all, be in good shape. With Coach Desti, things are going really well. He encourages us, motivates us to exceed ourselves. Pointe Noire already has 50 coaches trained on site by experienced mentors or in South Africa or the Democratic Republic of Congo. The coach then advises sports activities to keep healthy. Sport is not just about keeping healthy. Because sport is first and foremost something really natural. I advise people to practice sports activities as a preventive measure. I encourage those who don't have this motivation not to wait for the doctor to tell them to exercise. The sector is monitored by the Ministry of Sports, which grants operating permits. Coach Desti believes that the sports sector to promote well-being is quite promising in Congo. Generally back home in Africa, people think that athletes are people who have empty brains, who are not intellectuals, and that sport cannot pay the bills. Today, if I'm here now talking to you, it is thanks to sports. The sports that I teach to people, which is good for them and pays my bills today. Next year, Coach Desti and Zila plans to open two sports and fitness centers in Point Noir mainly. In the second part of our interview with Dudu Kuate, we delve into the heart of his creative universe where notes and words come together to give life to powerful narratives. Our artist takes us behind the scenes of his musical journey, talking about the influences that feed his art and the struggles he faces in making the voice of his generation to be heard. Let's take a look. 
Dudu Kwate, you were born in Dakar into a family of griots. Was this a fundamental part of your training as a musician? Absolument, oui. Absolutely, oui, parce que... Absolutely, yes, definitely, because we are a product of where we come from. I was born in an environment where my father listened to jazz and played jazz. My grandmother told stories. My uncle played percussion, and another grandmother also told stories. We grew up in this environment where, unwittingly, we learn things, we learn stories, and we learn to play an instrument because we see it from a young age. I can't say when I learned to play percussion instruments. I have played since I was little with my friends. Avec mes copains, avec les amis, et c'est un peu. Uh, That's the kind of school we went to. But as I grew older, my interest in music amplified. So I moved on to the guitar, discovered the guitar, and began to sing and create my own melodies because I sang at home. It's normal. My aunt, my parents, whenever there are events, you see a relative who sings, or an uncle who plays, and so. I feel part of it. It doesn't bother me to do it. And at a certain point, I could say, this is what I want to do as well. And your training also came through your father's jazz collection? My father was a big jazz fan. When I was very young, I had an endless collection of jazz music at home in Africa and I discovered jazz at an early age. It helped me fill the gap in learning jazz because I didn't go to the conservatoire, but I had memorized many of the standards by heart. At a certain point, this mainstream jazz no longer satisfied me, so I felt something else and discovered that I also liked free jazz and liked it even more. I then embarked on the journey of free jazz afterwards, one thing leading to another. And we always want to move towards something we love. How precisely did you manage to learn to play over 200 instruments? It is a passion. I started collecting instruments when I was in Europe. Buying and collecting. When I go to Africa, I often go to Africa every year or two. And every time I have instruments that I want to have around here, so I buy them and bring them here. By playing them, you develop a certain technique. Jouant, on développe une certaine technique. Acheter des instruments. Buying instruments has been my passion for years, and once you have them, you find a way of learning how to play them. Entre le moyen de les de les. If I'd fulfilled my desire to have all the African instruments. I'd like to have, I don't think we'd be at 200. We wouldn't be talking about 200, but 2,000 or more, because in Africa, there are more than 2,000 ethnic groups, and each ethnic group has their own instrument, several of them, so it's an immense, colossal and infinite task. You are already sharing your knowledge in Europe through conservatoire master classes. Would you also like to continue this mission of transmission in Africa as well? I am very tempted by it. I've been thinking about doing it for several years now. When things are mature, they can be done. I've had this idea for a long time, and you have to be there physically, mentally, and economically to do it. But what's important to me is to provide African musicians 
with the necessary tools, even if I didn't go to the conservatoire. After all, I've got 30 or even 40 years of experience in the music world. I don't know how, but I managed to find my word. I think I'm one of those African musicians who leaves part of themselves to tradition, but another part to openness, as Segor said, rootedness and openness. We are rooted in our cultural because this allows us to preserve them and not to lose them. It is the heritage we have and we open up too because when we do, we are richer. On est plus riche. Les enfants issus de deux cultures sont. Children from two different cultures are richer intellectually and culturally, thanks to knowing two cultures. Technique, des cultures, des mélodies. Providing African musicians with technical instruments for writing melodies is not about owning them, but about being able to write music based on tradition to develop it further and give it a new face. And it's this openness, but by having other new instruments to integrate into what we have. In South Africa, for example, they have a very fine conservatory. They have good musicians who have conservatory music training. But you have to go and see what they do with their traditional rhythms and songs. They managed to find a new modern face for the music without losing the tradition. Would you dream of this for the rest of Africa? Of course, for West Africa, Mali, with its immeasurable wealth of melodies, Africa is, in its entirety, every corner of Africa is rich with a variety of cultures, rhythms, songs, instruments and sound. What do we do with them? We can't just sit back and play melodies the way our grandfathers played them thousand years ago. I'd really like to see music keep pace with African economy and demographic development. Well, that's it. Initiative Africa is over for today. You can find the interview with Dudu Kwate as well as our programs on our website, africana.com. And of course, don't hesitate to follow us on our social media channels. Feel free to share, like, and comment with the hashtag Initiative Africa. And don't forget to tune in next week, same time, same channel, for a new edition of Business Africa. Have a great week and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>